Hello, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Clank Zoka, and welcome to another My Thoughts On. And today I will be finally talking about Aladdin. No, not the 1992 one. The most recent remake, besides one shit remake. Yes, this is the remake directed by Guy Ritchie, out of all people. And um, if you want to quickly know what I thought of the original Aladdin, um, I love it. Even though I haven't seen it before, and yes, it is very hard to believe, but there are Disney films out there that I never saw when I was young. I've only seen Dumbo... Pinocchio, Snow White, obviously, Cinderella, and that's about it. I, I'm, I was more of a Pixar person, and still am. But, but I did watch these classics quite recently. Um, I really liked, you know, The Lion King. I love Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin's just fantastic. It's got a engaging, creative story. Wonderful humour, the animation is beautiful and expressive, the characters are lovable and hilarious, the songs are wonderful. I think it's a fantastic animated classic. And um, Robin Williams as the genie steals the show. He was easily the best part of the film, even though I love the original Aladdin. And Iago too, I also like him as well. So, yeah, I actually really like Aladdin. Although I prefer Beauty and the Beast, it is slightly better than The Lion King. So, Guy Ritchie. You may know him for Lot, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Uh, Snatch, the guy from Uncle. He also did the Sherlock Holmes movies. And King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Now, I've only seen Snatched or Snatch, and I've also seen two. Uh, it's a lot of stock and two smoking barrels. Um, I really like the lot of stock and two smoking barrels. It's incredibly British. It's funny, charming, it's quotable. Snatch is interesting. It's also incredibly British, even though Brad Pitt isn't. A travel, a traveler, Irish. So I, I really like Guy Ritchie as a British director, and those two films are great. They are really, really damn good. So why is he directing a remake to a already animated classic? I don't know, but I didn't see the film when it came out because I thought the trailers looked shit. Um, the film did quite well at the box office, which is more just for nostalgia reasons than it is to actually think the film's good. It got mixed reviews from critics, but audiences love it. It's kind of like the great, the new greatest showman, in a way, although not really. Okay, so, you know the drill. Aladdin is a thief who likes to steal bread with his um, monkey sidekick named Apu. Uh, Jasmine, who likes to... You know, escape from the palace and be free. She assum- she stumbles upon Aladdin, and they both, I guess, kind of work together. But after Jafar, who is the main antagonist of the film, he wants this lamp. That's where a genie is in. He wants it to become powerful. So Aladdin goes off to find this lamp, while Jasmine has to marry someone for her to become for her to become a princess and for a prince to become the sultan Aladdin finds the lamp and what does it summon? A genie of course this time uh, played by Will Smith and so the genie will have to help him with the three wishes in order for Aladdin to get the attention of Jasmine now the original animated film did this also And let me tell you, the animated film did it... Well, it's not perfect. It did it in its own unique way. It had its cartooniness. It had its self-awareness. It had its comedy right. Storytelling was beautiful. And it was very 
like understandable at least so in a way I think it's good storytelling from the original animated film here however it's kind of more or less the same there are changes in this film and I'll be honest there is quite a bit of changes so let's go through them Right, so the story structure is different from the animated film. Jasmine escapes the, the palace in the animated film, and Jasmine's already escaped in here, so you don't see her talking to her father about just being more than a princess. No, this kind of just happens, which is weird, and um, the film's... And the film, like the original film, was like an hour and 25 minutes, which makes sense. This one's almost like two hours long. So they added in filler to, you know, make the film run a bit longer and also to exceed its running time. Um, the filler that they have is watchable at least, but it doesn't serve any point. The genie has a love interest who is basically Jasmine's sister and her name is Dahlia. Um, and that's it really. There's some other stuff here and there. But it's not from the original film. And it all feels a bit... I don't know. I mean, the first few minutes, it, the film was quick. Like, it has energy to it. And it's not like good energy. It's more like... Like, I saw energy. Yes, the first film had energy. But it was cartoony energy. That made sense. And it fit the world of the film. Here... It's quite silly and at times laugh would be bad, especially with the climax. So it was quite a weird experience watching this without knowing much of the original animated film. I mean, knowing a lot about it, um, you know. So, I mean, Guy Ritchie's usually good at directing his films. Here, I don't know if it's just me, but he seems incredibly clueless. Like, he, like there's a scene where Aladdin talks to Jasmine, you know, he's supposed to be like, you know, the prince, he's supposed to talk like a prince, but he just goes on and on and messing up his lines and the genie's just, you know, kind of making fun of him. It doesn't really seem to go anywhere and it involves jam, which is weird. So, again, the film doesn't really go anywhere with that point and at times the film can get incredibly incredibly boring and the, the two films that Guy Ritchie directed weren't boring at all even if they were going on for quite a long time here I mean you kind of know where the film's going and there's no point caring now the question remains is this as bad or as lifeless as The Lion King no actually okay kind of but not entirely lifeless the main reason, and this is pretty much why people love Aladdin, is the genie. He is the show stealer. He is the reason why people love the films. I'll get more into that with Will Smith in a minute. But when he comes into the, you know, when he comes into the film and when the songs are on, I thought the film got better. And even though the third act was just kind of silly and laughable. I did have a good time with that. I thought that was different, and I thought it had a much funnier and entertaining uh, direction there. Uh, but the genie does make things a lot better as the film will go on. It makes it entertaining, and it does make it slightly funny. And that's about it. Guy Ritchie could have done a lot more with what was given here, but for what we've got, I can't say it's... The worst writing, it's not as bad as like fucking Lion King. But it doesn't really it doesn't really seem to go anywhere except for just it, it except for just being the animated film only longer and in live action. So I can't say it's lazy, but I can't say it's well done either. So eh visuals. I'm a little bit mixed on the visuals here. The animated film obviously is animated, but the animated film had colour, it had style, it had impression, it had design, it was creative. Here, it's 
colourful, it's pretty. CGI is halfway decent. It's well shot, it has good costumes, and that's about it. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. I mean, you know where I'm going with it. The genie looks awful. I'm sorry, but I don't care what people think of the genie in this film, but oh my god, the CGI on Will Smith looks awful. He looks like a blue smurf, either that or just a a bigger version of his character in Spies in Disguise. What is it? Uh, Lance Sterling, yes. Except, instead of being a pigeon, just a big blue smurf. <laughs> Every time, when I first, when you first see him coming out of the lamp and saying, you know, making this big speech, I kind of laughed. Not because he was being funny, but the CGI is so laughable that I I couldn't stop myself. It was just hilarious. It This does make it a lot more funnier on Jafar. In the animated film, the genie was expressive. He was creative with his gags and jokes. And that's what made him awesome. Same with genie Jaf- Jafar. He looked intense. He looked intimidating and so evil. Here, it looks so funny. Uh, the CGI on Iago looks... I mean, I know he's a parrot, but it looks a bit weird, and I can't help but think of uh, uh, Wilbert uh, Gottfried. Alan Menken, Alan... Oh, uh, no, it's not Alan Menken. I mean, that's the guy who composed the music. Um, Alan Tukic does a okay job as Iago. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I mean, it does look quite nice when you see... Aladdin going to the temple in the desert and when he's with the genie. That looks quite cool. Looks quite nice. And the city where they live looks pretty. It looks nice. Jasmine's um, outfits look beautiful. The whole New World sequence was lacking in visuals and colour, unlike the animated film. Duh. But it looked okay. Overall... I think the visuals are a bit of a mixed bag. They do look pretty and colourful and nice. And the CGI is okay at best. However, it could use a bit more work. Especially on freaking Genie and Genie Jafar. Oh my god. This is why CGI isn't always going to work with... Uh, characters who are based on animated characters. Uh, boy. Overall, okay. It's just okay. Characters and acting. Our main character, Aladdin, or as he's known when he's in disguise as Prince Ali, is just like from the original film, likeable. He's likeable, he's funny, he's, he's a thief, but a likeable one. He's understandable. Um, you can understand why he's doing this, why, what his goals are, and yeah, I think he does. I think he's good. I think probably the same, like from the animated film. Only the one in the animated film has had more um, charisma. He had more charisma, personality, and character. This one's kind of the same, only just a bit dull. Just a little. Uh, Yasmin is probably the best character here. I think she's probably better than she was in the animated film. I like the one in the animated film, but this one is a little bit better. She has more character and humour, and, well, she's beautiful. What can I say? Um, Jafar is so laughable. He's a terrible villain. In the original film, I thought he was freaking awesome. Here, he's just a guy. He doesn't have a very distinct design. Uh, Same can be said about um, Sultan, who is Jasmine's dad. Uh, Not much to him. Uh, The sister, uh, Dahlia, or or Dahlia, is just a love interest for the genie and nothing else. Speaking of which, you're all wondering. You're probably thinking... Is Will Smith better than Robin Williams? And the obvious fucking answer to that is no. Robin Williams is the genie. Will Smith 
the, as the genie, is probably the best, well, the closest to being funny in the film. I do like Jasmine, but I think the I think the genie again is the best character in the film. Not as amazing as Robin Williams, but close. Now, the acting in the film is fine. I think is pretty good. Now, um, Will Smith as the genie, um, I thought he was passable. When he's not being the genie, he's charismatic, he's charming, funny, he's witty. I don't know, I thought he was actually quite good. I may have been a bit harsh on him in the trailers, but he was very convincing as the genie, although no Robin bleh, although no Robin Williams, he does a pretty good job. Um and then as Aladdin we've got uh Amena Masood. And again, he's also quite convincing as Aladdin. Sure he doesn't have the same outfit as Aladdin, but he has the same Personality, voice, charisma, and character. He does also look a bit like him, which is also a plus. Uh, Naomi, uh, Na- Naomi Scott as Jasmine is beautiful. She is she's likeable. She has personality. I think she fits the role of Jasmine quite well. She does a very good American accent. And yes, she is from the UK. It's pretty good. And again, she looks beautiful. What else can I say? Um, Marwan Kenzari as Jafar is eh, not as good as the as the voice actor who voiced Jafar in the in the original animated film. But he made he does make me laugh. Oh no, not not intentionally. I mean unintentionally because he is fucking awful as Jafar. I'm sorry, but he didn't really convince me that much. And uh, we've also got Navid uh, Nagaman as Sultan, or Sultan, or Sultan. Also just okay, nothing much, uh, nothing much else. Um, uh, Nazim Pedrad as uh, Dalia, the love interest for the genie, is also pretty good. Cute and funny, that's all I've got to say. As for everyone else... They do okay. They do a pretty fine, like, just by the number script job fine. Alan Tukik as, I can't believe I'm saying this, but as Iago is lackluster. Obviously, Wilbur Gottfried as Iago is better, but he's okay. So, with a pretty mixed bag of characters, you've got characters who are okay at best, and some that are forgettable. Acting, that's pretty good for the most part, and some that's eh. The best character in the film is the genie, obviously. Will Smith does a pretty good job, even though he's no, he's no Robin 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 Williams. Naomi Scott is also great as Jafar, as Jasmine, and so is uh, Mina Masood. Just overall, okay. The animated characters are better, but these are just fine. The songs are pretty much the same, so I won't talk about them except for that. Except for that one song that's been getting quite a bit of attention. Uh, Silent, speechless. It's the song near the end where Jasmine, after she gets taken away by Jafar's guard, she starts singing about this song about not staying silent or something like that. I don't know, and I do not care. You know, the trailers made this film look like shit, but in the end, eh, it's okay. It's not terrible, it's not great, but I've seen worse and better. The 2019 Aladdin remake is just fine. Uh, Its plot is pretty much just like the animated film, although it does have a few okay changes here and there. Visually, it looks gorgeous, and it has decent CGI. Uh, the genie and Jasmine are great. Aladdin is just his charm himself. And the acting is pretty good. However, some of these changes are a little lackluster. They're a little distracting, even unnecessary. And, you, and also, again, 
it's Aladdin, you know where the story's going. The genie looks laughably bad. Even the CGI on Apu and Iago look okay compared to that. Um, Jafar is a terrible... This version of Jafar is terrible. And the actor who plays him is also shit. So, yeah, not good, not bad, just meh at best. It's better, I'll give it that it's better than The Lifeless King, or as I call it, you know, the 2019 Lifeless King, if you will. But even I take, like, Dumbo over, bleh. But I do take the 2019 Dumbo over this, yes. I think that film is better than this. Seriously, I don't quite get why people love it. I can see why people like it, but not love it. Yes, it made money, but it doesn't mean it's good. It's just there for nostalgic reasons. I'm just going to guess that Mulan's going to be the same, but I don't know, because I'll never see it, because I'm fucking done with these remakes. 5.5 out of 10. Not good, not bad. Pretty forgettable, but overall, just okay. So, yeah, that was the 2019 Aladdin remake. I know I'm a bit late, but hey, better late than never, am I right? So, yeah, I'd, I don't know what I'm going to be doing next. Um, I know Adam's Family is coming out this week in the UK. I might review an animated film from MGM, because Adam's Family is also MGM uh, property as well. So, I'm not sure what to review next, but well, you'll probably get it about Friday or so. If you have seen the remake, if if you have, then why have you seen it? But if you have, let me know what you think below. Is it good, bad, decent? Do you want to see it? If so, I can understand, kind of. If not, then I also understand. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like comment and most importantly subscribe and until next time you never had a friend like me seriously because i'm something else than a friend wait where am i going with this i'll fucking forget it it's it's video's almost done so go away